Now, we're going to talk about football, which those of you who've listened to me before will know I'm not the most knowledgeable about, because there was an important game at Anfield in Liverpool last night, during which time Mohamed Salah penalty boosted Liverpool's chances of an epic top four finish to the season. And that probably means a lot more to you than it does to me. But, in spite of this excitement, the standout headline of the game was that some fans began singing unpleasant things about the King. It's also been reported a few days ago that Premier League clubs had been asked to play the national anthem at matches this weekend, which has annoyed some Liverpool fans. Now, um, who better to discuss this with than a very distinguished footballer, legendary figure, but also somebody of very sound views, um, Peter Shilton. Uh, Mr Shilton, thank you so much for coming on this programme. Do you think this is a deeper-seated hostility to royalty in football, or it's just the bad manners of a few? Um, well, it's, it's nice to be uh, on with you, Jacob. Um, I, th I think a bit of both, really. I mean, when you look around the world, every country has its national anthem and they're very proud of it, you know, whatever whatever country you're, you're in. And I think we're one of the top ones. We've always had a great pride about our country and about our national anthem. And, uh, of course, you know, we show it on so many occasions and... Um, you know, we've fought, we fought wars. People have died to uh, protect our country and our national anthem. Uh, the two go together side by side, and we've had it for years. Uh, I mean, from my personal and, point and, of view, you know... Footballers are hugely patriotic, aren't they? That, that when England is playing football, there's huge national interest. So it's a bit surprising that a small group um, have barracked the king at a, at a football match. Yeah, well, two, two things, really. When I, when I was playing for England, one of the proudest things was to, to sing or to have the national anthem play before the game. It, it was a fantastic moment. It's something players always remember. And, um, you know, it, it is sad that uh, a small minority feel that, uh, you know, that they have to do this. But I, I think especially Liverpool fans, I mean, when I, in my era, used to go to Anfield and it was one of the most hospitable grounds for, for the opposition in the country. As a goalkeeper, you used to run down to the cop and they all used, used to clap you and they used to have a fantastic sense of humour. They, they were known for that. And, uh, you know, I think, I think they're letting themselves down and the club down by, by booing, and certainly, the king... And I agree with you. I think our national anthem is absolutely wonderful and uplifting. There was a story earlier in the week that some people wanted to change it. But I think this focus on our king and the rousing tune is something that always lifts the spirits. Definitely. You know, it's, it seems to be in, in, embedded in us. You know, certainly, you know, people of my age and, and, you know, sort of older people, I think, but, you know, I think youngsters as well, you know, you can see them when the national anthem's played, you know, at schools, you know, they stand up, they know what it's all about. And for, for a small minority to take it upon themselves to boo, I mean, come on, let's, let's be fair. If you, don't, if you don't agree with certain things, just don't sing it, you know, but don't, don't embarrass your club and all the supporters in the club who, who, who love the national anthem. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're right. I was very impressed. The school my children go to uh, in London had in its notes for parents that children must take their hands out of their pockets when speaking to a teacher or singing the national anthem. Uh, as it was the school that the king went to for a year when he was a little boy, I think it's only appropriate that we should take that approach. And perhaps we shouldn't take too much notice of the small numbers who try and cause trouble and get a p bit of publicity uh, around the coronation and that we focus too much on the tiny minority. Yeah, I mean, this, this is happening all the time, isn't it? You're getting, you're getting the, the small minority trying to grab the headlines. You know, they, they, they have their agenda and, uh, you know, the media, to be fair, they have to, they have to report it. And, um, you know, it, they, they like to report it in some cases, but certainly... Um, you know, I think, I think, listen, everybody is going to celebrate in this country. It's going to be a wonderful occasion. And uh, obviously the police have got, you know, security on their hands. 
uh, but certainly the country will be will be celebrating to the hilt because you know we we do we do love our country and we do love our royal family and it's only a few that probably don't. Well. Thank you very much, Peter. I'm so glad you've come on because I'm a great admirer of yours for having the courage to be a famous footballer who isn't insufferably woke. So thank you for joining me this evening.